All right, so in this video, I wanna to aim to answer three questions. The first one being, uh, what is NVIDIA's frame generation and its upsides and downsides? Um, how well does it actually work in game? Like just playing games, we'll also sh I'll also show you some benchmarks and stuff like that that I took for um, all the games that I have on my computer that have frame generation. And then also, uh, is it worth buying a GPU because it has frame generation because uh, especially with new releases like the uh, 4070 and then eventually the 4060 Ti and then the 4060, uh, it's going to be hard to justify getting a card like that when you can get a uh, used 3080 for about the same price uh, if the leaks for the 3060 prices are correct. Um, you can get a used 3080 for around that same price and get way better performance and the real, really the only dis difference is, is the 40 series cards have frame generation so is it worth getting a gpu because it has that feature so yeah so yeah without further ado i don't want to waste none of your time so let's get right into the video so first let me explain to you what frame generation is so uh pretty much the ai tensor core is in your 40 series gpu it's important to note that uh, frame generation does not work on the 30 series gpus uh, but the AI tensor cores in your 40 series GPU will look at the frame uh, that was just shown on screen when you're playing a game, and then it will look at the frame that's just about to be shown on screen, and it will compare those two frames and make a fake frame to go in between them, and it will do this process every other frame. So that's why in theory, in some games it can double your FPS, which is true, in some games it can. Some games, some games it can't, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But since it is delaying showing you that second frame that it's looking at to get the fake frame, this does mean that it will increase your game latency, which means the game will feel a little bit more sluggish. This is one of the downsides that people mention about frame generation, but I feel like people make it sound like a bigger deal than it actually is. Um, from my experience playing five different games, which we'll take a look at here in a minute, uh, the latency increase is barely noticeable in most games it's not noticeable but the only game that i actually noticed it in was the witcher 3 wild hunt and that was only because my base frame rates or my frame rate without frame generation was really low i think it was right around 30 fps um so with the base frame rate being that low when it's um delaying the frames even more to put fake frames in it did increase the latency a decent bit uh right around like 25 to 30 milliseconds which was barely noticeable you can like I, I felt it, okay, but after a little bit of playing, you, you totally forget about it, you don't notice it, and you enjoy the smoother experience of playing the game with frame generation. But with that being said, if your base frame rate is high enough, like I'd say above 60, you really don't notice the uh, latency increase. It's most of the time around 10 milliseconds, which that is, that's not much at all. You don't really notice it, so yeah. Now the other downside to frame generation is that it just doesn't look quite as good and the visual differences most of the time are not noticeable but in games like uh what's the game called uh microsoft flight simulator i did notice that when i'm flying an airplane sometimes it didn't happen in the benchmark so you won't see it there but when i was playing the game there would sometimes be some ghosting behind the plane uh that was from the frame generation so it's it's kind of visual artifacts like that that you sometimes notice but most of the time it's it was fine the only other game that i noticed any sort of visual artifacts was in forza horizon 5 which uh, i did play but i didn't bench benchmark for reasons that i'll talk about in a minute but in, in that game there was once again when you get going really fast in a car there was sometimes some ghosting behind the car um not uh, it didn't happen often at all but it did occasionally happen so i thought i'd mention it but yeah those are really the only two downsides other than the fact that you need a 40 series gpu to use it <laughs> But now let's talk about how it actually works in game. So I have this edited piece of footage, which you'll be watching as I'm watching it. And we'll take a look at it. The first game that I benchmarked was The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And this was one of the games where it did pretty much double the frame rate in some cases. We were going from around 38 to 40 uh, to or in like the 60s and 70s, which is really awesome. And you can see down in the bottom left hand corner of each, uh, I guess, frame of the video. Uh, you can see the render latency. I couldn't make it any bigger, but I'll say what it is as I'm watching this. Uh, it's right around 21 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds ish for uh, when frame generation is off, and then right around 30 to 40 milliseconds when frame generation is on. And this, once again, I did notice it, but it wasn't a big difference at all. I couldn't, like, you, you forget about it after playing the game for a while. But while playing The Witcher, I didn't notice any sort of visual artifacts. I even did some combat, thinking if I was going to notice anything, it would probably be there with the swords flinging around everywhere. But I didn't 
didn't notice anything so that's really cool well the next game that i uh, benchmarked was plague tale requiem and this is another game where it just works flawlessly uh we almost got double the fps with this game uh, we went over from around 60 to 90 to 100 and uh, in this game i did not have frame generator uh, not frame generation uh, ray tracing on it only supports ray trace shadows which it barely makes a difference you can barely tell the difference when you turn ray tracing on um so i didn't have that on but this is pretty much a perfect scenario of it working we're going from a good base frame rate of around 60 to almost you know into the hundreds in some cases with frame generation and i didn't play a lot of this game but while i was doing the benchmark i didn't notice any sort of visual difference uh, other than it just being smoother the latency increase was once again not noticeable uh, especially going from a good base frame rate it was not noticeable you wouldn't notice it while playing the game uh, but the next game that i benchmarked was uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and this was another game where it worked great and like I said like I mentioned before uh, there was occasionally some ghosting behind the plane like you didn't it didn't happen in this benchmark but um, it did happen occasionally when I was playing when I first got this GPU but we are going from around 45 or f the mid 40s and sometimes into the 60s to around 100 FPS which this is just awesome and the render latency, which we can see, it's kind of hard to see. I wish I could have made it bigger, but this one actually didn't increase much at all. We're going from around 10 milliseconds to 15 milliseconds I've, I'm seeing. So that is really, really cool. So yeah, just it looks really awesome and it should transition to just showing the frame generation footage. Um, just so you can see the full screen of that here pretty soon. There we go. So yeah, now you can see the full screen of what it looks like with frame generation on right around 100 FPS. I can't remember exactly what my settings were when I was playing this. Uh, I know it wasn't maxed out just because my base frame rate would have been way too low uh, for, for us to get good results with uh, frame generation. But yeah, even going really cl close to the ground so that stuff is moving even quicker, it still looks great. So yeah. And another game that I benchmarked was Hogwarts Legacy. Now this game, I did have to turn ray tracing off uh, to get a good base frame rate because I noticed when my frame rate was way too low the render latency did increase quite a bit but I turned off ray tracing and so I was getting it right around uh, 60 fps and then I turned frame generation on and now we're getting up around to 100 fps so yeah once again great implementation and the render latency on this one is really surprising oh goodness I just realized I was calling it the wrong thing uh, it's average pc latency so uh yeah Average PC latency with uh, Hogwarts Legacy was really good. Um, we went from 53 milliseconds to, I mean, 55 is the highest that I've highest that I've seen. So yeah, I mean, you didn't notice any sort of increase in latency while playing, and yeah, almost double the FPS. So I mean, that's that's awesome. And as for visual differences, I only noticed a few when I was uh, in combat. So like when you're doing magic stuff with your wands, sometimes there'd be some ghosting behind like the thing shooting out of your wand you know what i mean you know what i mean you picking up what i'm putting down here sometimes there'd be some ghosting behind that but that was really it and i would say that's totally worth that small visual artifact for the almost doubling of your fps so yeah so that was the last game that i benchmarked but i also did play forza horizon 5 which i didn't benchmark because i'm having some weird issues in that game with it freezing all the time so i wasn't able to get a good benchmark result but i did play it a little bit and i did notice some ghosting behind the car but that was it no other visual artifacts than that um well i actually know i when i occasionally when you'd go under a bridge like sometimes the like there could be some ghosting and just it would just look weird the bridge come when you're when it's flying past you but that was it though and the uh average pc latency didn't increase much at all i can't remember it, it increased but it wasn't much at all and not noticeable but uh yeah yeah overall my whole experience with frame generation has been very good there hasn't really been any games that i wouldn't play um with it on pretty much all the games that i have that I have it i would turn it on and i would enjoy using it you know what i mean so yeah but this was just my experience your mileage may vary but um the last question that i want to answer is should you buy a gpu mainly the, either the 4070 or eventually the 4060 ti and 4060 when they release because it's got frame generation uh, I'm, I'm mainly applying this to those cards because you can get a used 3080 which is going to have better performance than all three of the cards that i just mentioned and you can get it for like 450 bucks which i think 
is right around what the price of the 4060 and 4060 Ti is going to be. And the only real thing that the uh, 4060, 4060 Ti, and the 4070 has going for them is the fact that they have frame generation. So should you buy those GPUs when they come out because they have frame generation? And I'm going to say no. And my reason for that is because not enough games support frame generation. You know, it's hard to recommend a GPU to someone because it's got frame generation when they might not even be able to use it. You know what I mean? So... I wouldn't recommend getting a GPU because it has frame generation, although maybe in the future once more and more games support it and it's, you know, more of a something that you expect in every game release, and, you know, I then I would maybe recommend that you buy a GPU because it has that feature. But with that said, my whole experience with frame generation has been really good and I do think it's a really cool feature. Uh, there are some downsides to it, but there is with anything that increases performance really. I mean, it's either turning down settings, which there's downsides to that, or turning on DLSS, which there's downsides to that. but yeah, either way, um, I hope this video was helpful. If it wasn't, hey, drop a like down below and then maybe get subscribed for more content like this in the future. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.